we are recording. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Um, continue to sign in and get settled, but we're going to go ahead and get started with um, today's CNCF live webinar, tackling the Kubernetes software packaging puzzle with CNCF Sandbox Project Carvel. I am Libby Schultz, and I will be moderating today's webinar. I'm going to read our code of conduct and then hand over to Cora Iberclyde, developer advocate, and Gabri Brody, solutions engineer, both with VMware. A few housekeeping items before we get started. During the webinar, you are not able to speak as an attendee, but you are able to add questions to the chat box. Please do so and get uh, send your questions there. We'll get to as many as we can at the end. This is an official webinar of the CNCF and as such is subject to the CNCF Code of Conduct. Please do not add anything to the chat or questions that would be in violation of that Code of Conduct. And please be respectful of all of your fellow participants and presenters. Please also note that the recording and slides will be posted later today to the CNCF online programs page at community.cncf.io under online programs. They're also available via your registration link you used to sign in today. And the recording will also stay on our online programs YouTube playlist. With that, I will hand things over to Cora and Gabri. Take it away. Okay, thank you, Libby. Thanks so much. So yeah, so we're here to talk about tackling the Kubernetes software packaging puzzle with CNCF Sandbox Project Carvel. I am Cora Iberclyde, a developer advocate, as Libby said, and uh, I'll let Gabri. Hi, I am uh, Maria Gabriella Brody, uh, AKA Gabri Brody, shorter uh, is better. I am a solution uh, engineer uh, at VMware and uh, thank you very much for uh, this time. Very happy yeah. to be here with Cora and uh, the whole team. Thank you, Libby. Yeah. Thanks so much. And uh, and we just wanted to throw up there that we are co-organizers of Meetup uh, New York, Cloud Native New York Meetup. So if you're here, you can join. occasionally we have online. So uh, today we want to cover uh, sort of the challenge of our project Carvel. We want to set us uh, give you an idea of what each individual tool is for but then give you a larger broader story for software producers and software consumers for multi-component applications so we'll talk about the challenges and requirements uh, that you need if you're in one of these two uh, task groups producers and consumers of software and then we'll go through the project and give you an, an, a demonstration of uh, how you can put it all together so uh, yeah, Gabby, you want to talk a little bit about challenges? Sure. Oops. <laughs> sure. So from a perspective of a software producer, I need to deliver uh, a system that it's quite complex. There are many software components. I need to give this to my customer. So this is my challenge, how to do this. Um, and then from a producer, from a consumer perspective, um, as we know, the, uh, many systems are not only systems of microservices, but actually, you know, you might have an application and have the database, or it's just a more complex application together. As a consumer, if I want to um, take advantage of, of a, such, such a system, I want the, I want it to be easy, right? I need to deploy it to many different target locations. And those target locations might have different configuration requirements. Either it's multi-cluster or every target location actually satisfies a different use case. Um, so I, I, my concern is how do I get this complex system out to many different kinds of targets? So for, so back to the challenges, right? So Gabri, as a producer, what are some of your specific challenges so i oh i can see the oh oh sorry i i was looking at the wrong uh, screen well the first challenge is if myself like i i am uh, the the one that's developing the system if i am not able to do uh, an easy installation of the system i cannot test it in uh, a, a, a pretty a fast fashion, like I, I cannot be up to speed with all of the things that need to be happening in order to go properly through the life cycle of my system, then uh, even uh, how can I think about my 
uh, users being able to do that. So first of all, I need to solve also the same challenge for myself and see how I can be uh, really, I can be able to do this, in, to do install different components, to do upgrades of these components. So everything that's about the life cycle management uh, of software uh, in my own uh, environment. And then from there, improve to, of course, also provide the experience to my customers. Now, this system that I'm looking at can be something where uh, I need to uh, configure uh, different, uh, um, I, I need to configure for different type of use of my software. For example, I can have a system that is installed uh, in a location where there are a lot of resources. I can rely on uh, high availability, like I can run uh, multiple replicas of, of the same uh, workload and uh, let's say that I'm also using uh, an external system I can uh, um, also look at the uh, components of the system and say I want to use let's say a database in high availability or uh, if I deploy this instead in a smaller location I want to do I want to find uh, an easy way so that my consumer can say, you know what, I need to run with less replicas and I also need to use a database that, for example, is not in a uh, high availability type of configuration. I want also to be able to deploy all of the dependencies that I have uh, that are needed for uh, this software to, to run because eventually I'm, I'm having some uh, third-party components that I need to also add. And uh, the, the, other, uh, the other thing is that I would like for this complex system to be really installed in, uh, like, how we used to install software uh, in, uh, I don't know, with a, um, an image for our Mac or an executable in our Windows. So in one step, is that really possible? I'm just going to, I think, uh, Gabby, I think we're looking at different screens, but I advanced the slide one. I bet I think it might be, um, it might be, you might be moving the slides on your own screen differently. So just so you know, I, we're on the producer requirements. I'm just going to go back a slide to tell the, the second half of this slide, which is the consumer side. Uh, so from, from the consumer side, the same story, right? Like if the producer uh, delivers a software, uh, even if the producer delivers software in a cohesive package, in a single package from a, consumer perspective, because my targets are vary in the type of the capacity that they can uh, sustain or maybe the type of hardware, I might have edge locations, I might have a, a data center, uh, a private data center, I might have something in the cloud that's more uh, elastic. I can't simply take the same YAML, for example, the same configuration that describes a multi-component system and apply that same YAML to different locations. Or as Gabri mentioned, right, there's things like databases, things like that require secrets. So every target location has to have some kind of uh, configurability. So, so we have both of those challenges, right? A, a complex multi-component system, as well as the need to vary the configuration of it depending on the target location, right? So different apps, different targets, different configuration. And so I'll go past this next slide, which we covered. Uh, so from a consumer perspective, my requirements um, are that if I have different target locations and they all require uh, the same system to be installed, but that system has to be installed in different ways, like maybe in at the edge I need three apps and in the cloud I can install 10 apps, right? A sort of a different kind of setup for the same system. Then I still, as, as a consumer uh, system manager, I still want the whole system to be centrally managed. Uh, especially if you think about edge locations uh, that are maybe a point of sale somewhere or somewhere, you know, in a remote area, we can't necessarily assume that you even have the same sort of operational um, uh, personnel to be able to manage a, an edge, right? So I, so it's very important to have this sort of central management and not assume that uh, you can have high touch deployments. So everything should be low, no touch deployments, automated uh, as much as possible and allow for different kinds of configuration and combinations. 
And of course, it's super important, of course, that this be reliable, repeatable every time, because you might have thousands and thousands of, of target locations and you ha and have to manage the system with confidence and repeatability. And finally, there are going to be some target environments that have access to the internet and some target environments that are air-gapped. So again, we need, we need to be able to uh, consume software in a way that allows for both of these setups. So functionally, uh, get this out, Gabby, and you can cover it. So in terms of functional requirements, then uh, we know that we are looking to distribute into a Kubernetes-friendly environment. So we need to be able uh, to, to work with Kubernetes. Of course, GitOps, uh, it's going to be a, an important requirement. So we need to have the possibility to approach a GitOps uh, model. And for all of this reason, uh, we need, need something that is really going to enable us to manipulate uh, YAML configuration because there are going to be a lot that we need to, to work with. But we also want to have a clear building of materials. Like we need to know what is deployed at any time for uh, a specific environment. So we are not going to use uh, simply tags and label for our images, we need to be able to lock down the exact SHA that was uh, used uh, for, uh, for a specific deployment. This is also uh, another uh, uh, important component of our solution. And uh, last one is that we need to automate as much as possible all of the operations. Uh, and uh, let's see how we can do this, which are the tools that are really giving us this uh, edge. Exactly. So we propose that Carvel gives us all of these uh, function, provides all of these functional requirements for us and gives us the tool set to be able to solve these two challenges for producers and for consumers. And so we want to spend the rest of the time now introducing you to this project and showing you how it can particularly solve these two problems. Um, so from a high level, uh, you can see this on carvel.dev, the Carvel home site. It's a set of reliable, single-purpose composable tools. So you can see that there are uh, four, five, six, seven tools listed on the website, and each one has a very specific uh, purpose that it specializes in. And you can use each tool separately from the others, but you can also string them together in a way that gives you a complete workflow to solve the broader challenges that we're talking about. So. Let's dive in a little bit more. Um, so what does it mean? Again, single purpose and composable. So for example, these are three of the tools that were shown in the last slide. So YTT, for example, is a tool that focuses on processing YAML. It can be templating and it can overlay. So uh, some overlap with a tool with Customize, for example, some overlap with Helm, uh, but it can it has, uh, it's a very effective tool for sort of wrangling your YAML. Um, and so it expects YAML as input, it modifies the YAML, and then it, it emits YAML as output. Uh, KBuild is another tool that's part of the tool set of, of uh, Carvel, and this one specializes in finding all of the images that are mentioned in any in YAML and uh, resolving them to their shot. So it has to have access to the registry in which these images actually live. It goes to the registry and it looks at what, which SHA represents that tag, and then it emits the same YAML that you that it read, but now it has, it, it produces uh, it, uh, an information about what the actual SHA is. And then we have CAP, which is uh, sort of a, an improvement on kubectl CLI. kubectl CLI, one, one of the challenges, for example, is, is if you do a kubectl apply on a file that has 20 different resources in it, then you can't simply use kubectl delete and the same file and delete all 20 resources, right? You have to have that file so you can see which resources they were and delete them one by one. Or there's no way that you can manage, if you if you change one field in that file of 20 resources and you apply that file again, kubectl can't tell you what's changing and get you to confirm that you want to do that change, right? Are you creating something new? Are you updating? You really don't know. Kubectl is, is, is more basic than that. So CAP is sort of a step up from that, and it's also one of the tools in the tool set. And because all of these tools expect and get YAML, then they can simply be um, 
chained together in this way to give you a workflow. Uh, in this case, starting with some YAML, uh, updating some fields, resolving the SHAs, and then applying it directly to your Kubernetes cluster. Now, because they're YAML in, YAML out, they're also interchangeable with tools that you might be more fami familiar with. So if you want to continue using Helm, Custom, and QCuddle, or any other tool that reads and emits YAML, then those can play very well together. So again, because they're single purpose, uh, you can choose what you want. Uh, vendor is another tool in the uh, in the set of Carvel tools that was shown on, on the screen with the screenshot from the web page. Vendor is a tool that enables you to synchronize dependencies. So for example, if you are uh, in developing application, then you own that source code and you own that YAML configuration. But you may need to include, for example, a database or some other, uh, or, or just a third party uh, piece of software that is included, that, that forms part of your system. And you don't own that code and you don't own that YAML. So Vendor can help you um, uh, reference which where the source of those dependencies are. In this example we're showing on the screen, the source happens to come from a GitHub repo, but it doesn't have to be Git. It could be other kinds of sources, images and such. And it gives you the ability to, through a simple command, synchronize on your local machine the files that you need from that third party uh, product. So you can see here on the right, after a vendor sync, we've actually downloaded in this case, the YAML configuration for Redis, because we are Redis is a dependency in our system, and we don't want to tell our consumers to go get their own Redis. We actually want to vendor in Redis into our application. So vendor can help us manage that, uh, and again, track versions and track SHAs and things like that. So vendor's another one in there. So if we put it all together, if we're building a multi-component system, we would first bring in our third-party dependencies, and then we take that plus the rest of our YAML uh, configuration for the rest of our system, and then we can uh, get to a place where we can apply that to a Kubernetes cluster. But of course, this flow, you know, you, you don't usually, if you're in the business of producing software, you don't want to uh, necessarily just have a YAML file with a whole bunch of stuff in it. You might want to be a little bit more organized or provide different ways for consumers to retrieve your software. And so in this case, there's another tool called Image Package, which we show it, we're showing here as instead of using CAP to directly apply the YAML to a Kubernetes cluster, instead you can take all of that configuration and place that into a bundle and have the consumers download that bundle instead. In the same way that you would send them an installer executable, for example. But in the case of Carvel, what it does is it, it leverages OCI image registries as a way to transport uh, files to consumers. So it's kind of like a, in the same way that you might use an FTP server, you can, you, uh, you can put any arbitrary content inside of an OCI image and then use a registry to enable people to download that content. And so you can see here, for example, what's going into this uh, OCI image is just a set of files. It's not actually necessarily um, YAML that you would directly apply to a Kubernetes cluster. We're not using or it's not, it's not a, we're not using the OCI image as the executable uh, image that would go inside of a pod. We're using an OCI image as a method to transfer uh, and, and distribute uh, a, a, an, an arbitrary set of files. So this is, we're gonna use this as a way of getting software to consumers, which is also great because consumers can now, every image has a SHA, right? So there's, it also gives you a way for consumers to know exactly what they're getting and to track that. So that's image package. And then, so that's the producing side, right? Once I vendor in my dependencies, I process all the YAML, I specify what SHAs I want consumers to obtain, and I put that all in a bundle. Um, then I can tell my consumers to simply reference that bundle. And once they download, they put that into a Kubernetes cluster, and that Kubernetes cluster using Yet another one of the tools that we saw on the on the first image uh, that showed all of the tools of Carvel. In this case, we're talking about Cap Controller because this process is now happening inside of the Kubernetes cluster, right? We apply this this package YAML shown here on the right into the cluster, so the cluster can now obtain that image from the registry in which it sits. So now you have all of the software that you eventually want to install in your cluster is now unpackaged from that bundle, and then inside of the cluster. Any additional configuration uh, can be applied, and we can ensure that we're using the exact SHAs that were specified by 
uh, KBuild, so you know that you're going to download exactly what you want. So it's sort of a declarative, uh, the, the <coughs> excuse me, the consumer has a declarative mechanism to consume software, which goes back to that requirement of low touch, no touch deployment. Uh, and you have, so you have an imperative workflow for the producer and a declarative workflow for the consumer. Again, the consumer can also replace uh, uh, any of these tools with an equivalent tool um, because they are, they are interoperable. So whether it's, excuse me, whether it's Helm or whether they're getting, uh, they're fetching the image from, from a different source, uh, Cap Controller actually supports all of these cases. We're of course highlighting that you can use an image package for it, but, uh, but the product is a little bit more flexible than, than that. Okay, so um, I've shown you a uh, sort of a, a, a workflow that highlights each individual tool, which um, by nature sort of shows that it's, it's, it's uh, very powerful, but perhaps a little cumbersome to call one tool at a time. So at this point, I'm going to hand it over to Gabri to show you how to make this even easier. Um, and Gabri, do you want to share your screen? Sure. I think you need to stop, though, otherwise I don't see. Okay, now I see. Okay, yes, so there is a kind of a, a tile missing over here that we just found, and the name of the tile is uh, K-Control. Why we are really interested in uh, this K-Control uh, um, component from Carpel? Well, K-Control, uh, it's uh, a neat, like the, the CLI, that you can uh, use when interacting with KApp uh, controller. So that's great because we can use that to do uh, um, to talk with the KApp controller uh, and uh, check what's happening with our applications that we deploy through KApp. But the things that is particularly relevant for us at this point is that uh, it uh, helps uh, in uh, facilitating uh, the creation and the consumption of packages. We can think at K-Control like uh, an orchestrator for all of the other uh, Carvel uh, uh, toolset, like the YTT, KBLD, WebVendir, Image Package, KApp, with through using K-Control and uh, a simple subset uh, uh, of commands, you can actually reproduce the entire flow that Cora was uh, showing before just uh, using one command. Let's take a look. In uh, the in the example, uh, in the uh, conversation before uh, with Cora, she was saying, uh, let's say that we have a, this uh, software component and the software component uh, is also in need of using uh, Redis. And we are using Redis that has been offered uh, as an uh, Helm to an Helm uh, deployment model uh, from a third party. And this is, by the way, it's also going to be one of the examples that we are looking at uh, later in the demo. Well, uh, we will start by using Vendir to add uh, the configuration of Redis to our uh, set of configuration for our application. And then we will start using YTT, KBLD, image package to go through all the flow of creating our package. And we need to orchestrate all of this. So it, it can be quite a little bit. But K-Control over here, it's going to be really interesting because it actually can uh, orchestrate everything from uh, using uh, Vendir to download what's necessary and, uh, and then to put in uh, the right sequence YTT, KBLD, and image package with the purpose of creating uh, our uh, package for our application. So let's take a look. We have specifically two sub uh, command inside uh, the K-Control CLI that we are going to the first one is package init. 
what package in it does is uh, this portion of package build and package resources and eventually vendor if there are uh, external components that we want to vendor in. And uh, as we use uh, key control package in it, we will see a few parameters that will be supplied to it. So we are using an imperative approach at this point. We are, uh, uh, the output of this command, it's going to be to generate a number of YAML files for us that contains all of the necessary configuration for uh, our package. Then the second thing that we do is to call a, a key control package release. And the package release, what it does is essentially taking uh, versioning, whatever it, we put in our uh, original package, and uh, uh, creating uh, metadata and package file that contain all of the information for this package to be uh, uh, deployed, but also it's going to ask for the information on the uh, registry that we want to use in order to uh, use image package to bundle all of this configuration mm -hmm. file and then uh, save into the specific uh, registry. Let's look at an implementation of it. So first thing we said, we are going to create from our uh, application, let's say we have this Hello application that's using also Redis, we are going to create first a package of our application that contains not only our configuration component, like uh, all of the YAML that we need to deploy our application, but also we said we wanted to vendor in Redis so that we are going to um, really deploy everything at once. Oh, this is great, but now probably I have more than one application with these own components that I need to give to my consumer. And in our example, we will have another giant application that we want to deploy. But of course, you can have a really high number of microservices that will need to interact together in order to provide the function, the final feature that you want to deliver to your users. So you can actually have a number of packages that you want to give to your customer. So if the customer now, the consumer now has to uh, in, do the installation of each package, well, now this can again be, uh, uh, this is already uh, much more uh, than uh, our original idea of experiencing uh, a kind of an install where I double click on something and everything that needs to be installed in my system, it's going to go there. Well, uh, with Carvel, uh, this is possible. We are going to introduce the concept uh, of the meta, meta package. The meta package, what it does is that it creates the structure of the package around uh, all of the packages that we need to deploy. And essentially, we can see how inside the Mecata package we have, as usual, as we were saying before, configuration on the package and the meta package of the data. And then we have a directory that contains the package installer. And for each application, we have the opportunity to say exactly how, sorry, for each of the packages that are referenced, in, uh, in this meta package, we can say what is, uh, the, uh, which are, what is the configuration that we want to apply. So this, uh, the concept of the meta package is the one that uh, allow us to deliver uh, this uh, single uh, entry point of installation for a system that can be quite complex. And we will see how even though we can uh, add opinionated default, we can also provide the user with the possibility to change some of default for, with what is more appropriate in, uh, in their system. And uh, 
One other uh, concept that we need to keep in mind while doing this is the concept of profile. Let's say that I have my, num my different packages that I need to deploy. I create the meta package that is going to take all of them and know how to deploy and it knows how to deploy all of them. And I'm targeting this for system of my customer, customer A. But then I have another customer, customer B, that has a slightly different uh, uh, need. And uh, for example, in, uh, in, our, uh, in our demo later on, we will target two different uh, situations. One where uh, I have a customer with uh, Really, it's already using uh, Kubernetes and a lot of this technology at scale. They already have Knative implemented. And so when we deploy to this uh, customer, we are going to use a deployment type that is Knative. But eventually, we can deploy to another user that starts uh, smaller than uh, customer A. So customer B it's going to have a profile. It's going to use a profile that is uh, slightly small. It's going to be uh, just, uh, it's not a full profile. And at this point, it's going to have the uh, a different type of configuration. And we can allow for this to happen. The last element that we need to consider is to put everything into one uh, repository so that all of these packages are going to be contained in one repository. And for this, also kcontrol provide a handy command that we can use to create this repository and release it. And uh, Cora, do you want to talk about the package consumption or do you want me to just click over, over this? Um, you know what? I'm a little bit uh, concerned about our time. So why don't we talk? Why don't we go to the demo and then we'll come back to this. We'll go sure. to the demo. Perfect. The producer side, and then we'll show you the consumer side. Yeah. Perfect. So let's look at the package. Uh, oops, too much. Package authoring. We have a, a repository that we can share later uh, uh, on with the with everything that we are going to do with this demo. One thing that I'm doing over here. Oops. One thing that I want to do right now is just to quickly set up my environment so that we can really speed up the demo. And all of the information are in uh, this readme file, so you can take a look at this later on. So I'm going to start my, my demo over here, and let's take a look. I have my giant application. I already built the giant application, the low application. Everything that I'm using, it's already built. I already have the container. Uh, and what I'm interested in right now, it's only in building the package for this application. So I'm taking a look at the configuration file that I am I need in order to uh, deploy the application on a Kubernetes file. And I see that right now I have those uh, files that contains the standard configuration. Now, let's start with the uh, package in it. But I want to, to start packaging my application. And the way I am going to do this, I'm going to give a name that's going to be giant app corp. Right now, I am uh, I have everything downloaded locally, so I'm going to use local directory. And in this local directory, the config directory is the one that contains the information that I'm uh, interested in. And so that's uh, I'm providing just this. And uh, what happens is that now uh, kcontrol already built the files that I, I need later on to um, to build uh, my, my application. And you can see that the package build is already there, and there are a few of the information that I already provided. And uh, there is a second uh, file that has been built uh, where there are uh, information also to consume the package. So a lot of the YAML is automatically uh, produced by kcontrol. Now let's take a look. I want to create the actually uh, package uh, repository for, uh, for my uh, application. So I want to release. So first, we initialize the package. Now we want to release the package. And to release the package, we need to 
say where is that we are going to um, save uh, the image package bundle. So the parameter that I'm providing over here is exactly the my, my registry. What I'm going to say over here is that I want to release the giant application, and this is the version, and I also want to put everything inside this repository directory. And uh, as you can see, KBFD is uh, behind the scene running, uh, sorry, um, K control is behind the scene running uh, other tools from uh, the Carvel belt on its own. And now I can see that what was before empty now contains two files, one with the release and a metadata. In the release file, what we have is that now we have the specific uh, image bundle that we are going to use uh, that we are uh, pushing to our uh, registry. We have the version, and uh, we are also um, pointing to that there are uh, images uh, with like the SHA for the images that I'm using have been also saved over here, so they are not. Now, before and after the release, what happened to those files? Well, really, really quickly, you can see that Specifically, if we concentrate, if we concentrate on so only on the package side, from zero we went to the specific version. We added the information for uh, the um, image that we are going to use, and also we add information on uh, KBLD and all of, where all of these files are. Plus, we are saying, look, there is a bit, uh, an, an open API specification with the parameters that can be specified. And they are here. So the, this is really handy because now you have an, also an easy way to query these parameters and know what you can uh, configure. And we are going to do the same thing also for uh, the Hello app. So I'm going to go, uh, try to go fast over here. And uh, again, this is going to be one, and it's going to be concrete. Perfect. Now we want to release the package. And again, to release this package, we need to have the repository that we want to release to. So we're going to put this, and it's going. Well, now let's go to the Redis application that we want, also want to bundle in. So what we are doing is that we are going to uh, init this. Uh, we are, um, K control is going to vendor in our Redis uh, application by, first of all, now we are going to use a Git repository as a source, not a local directory as we did before. And as you can see, there are also other options that can be used to accomplish the same. So now what I want to give is the URL where that Redis uh, uh, files are contained. And uh, I'm going to say, take from there only and all the file that starts with Redis. And you can see that Vendir is now orchestrated directly. So now I see that there are, from upstream, all of these files were downloaded, plus all of the file, the one in red, that uh, K control uh, uh, while creating the, the package already produced for us. So you can see in the Vendir, uh, there are, uh, it also produced the YAML for uh, the vendoring in all of the uh, files. So now, again, we are going to push this into our uh, image, bundle in, image bundle into our uh, registry. And uh, at this point, uh, the only thing that we need to do is to really work with the meta package. So we already populated a couple of information over here. In particular, uh, let's look at the Hello app. What we are doing is that we are reusing the uh, package insta that were uh, built before, but also we are adding some uh, overlay, some uh, Starlack uh, syntax through YDT to uh, change information so that these are going to be specific uh, for uh, if the profile is, is uh, full or if it is not full. So if it is full, it's going to be Knative. If it's not full, it's going to be core. So it's going to do deployment instead of using Knative service. It's going to deploy using uh, standard uh, deployment uh, and uh, uh, service file. 
And then we are also changing some of the uh, variable uh, for uh, from some of the parameter uh, for uh, our uh, uh, from for the value to uh, uh, of, of the for the configuration of our application. I'm sorry. So now, as we do this, we see that we have in uh, in our uh, repository we have packages for uh, the three application, and now we want to add the other uh, package that is the meta package that will contain information on how to deploy the application. So again, we are going with one config, and uh, sure enough, now we can do our release. You can see this is quite uh, repetitive Oops, at this point. I pasted uh, too early. OK. OK. And now I have the meta package added to the repository. So now the only thing that I need to do is to release uh, the, uh, to create uh, a repository with all of these packages. So I am uh, adding uh, information uh, for the repository and for the um, registry where I'm saving all of this. And uh, that's it. This is my one of the application that I push. You can see there are a number of pushes, but that's not really relevant at this point. So Cora, back to you. Awesome, thanks. Sorry. I think mean to make you too nervous with the time but uh okay so i'm gonna share my screen and basically i'm gonna show you the consumer uh experience now i'm gonna share screen okay so just to recap right so gabri has just built as a, as a very sophisticated software producer uh gabri has a system that i want the system has three different individual applications redis a hello app and a giant app each one of these has been converted into a package by using carvel i still don't want to have to download three different things so gabri has created a meta package so that i can have that single touch uh the single click experience and just say install the meta package and that will uh, install each of those individual three packages for me. And then in order to, for me to be able to obtain that software easily, Gabri put it into a repository, uh, created a repository out of it, and wrap that into an OCI image so that I can easily just download this OCI image. And uh, again, so a single download and a, and a single step installation with a meta package. So my experience as a consumer uh, let me just show you the slide quickly, um, <clears throat> is that I'm going to use also K-Control, and I'm going to add the repo. I'm going to do a repo add, take that repository Gabri created for me, put it into my cluster, and then I'm going to say I want to install the meta package and expect that to download to all of them. And then the other thing I want to do is Gabri also showed uh, in an earlier slide, here I'll show you, that uh, she's put a lot of configuration into her packages so that I have, a, a, there, she's introduced the concept of a profile. So now I can look at my different target locations and decide, is it, a, is it a profile A or profile B? In this case, we're using as examples, large profile, small profile, but it could be any profile you want. And in a large profile, as Gabri has configured it for me, I will have all three applications installed. If I do a small profile, I only get the Hello app with the Redis, but not the Giant app. That's too big for my small targets. And also, I have the ability to tailor other configuration values for every target. So I'm going to show you uh, how I can take advantage of what Gabri has built for us. And we, OK, so 50 minutes. So OK, so first of all, I'm working on a cluster. Um, this cluster has Cap Controller installed, right? I'm going to work with that declarative com consumer experience. So as I apply YAML to my cluster to tell uh, Carvel in this case, cap, cap controller, uh, how to, uh, to download that repository and how to unpack it. <coughs> cap controller is the Carvel tool that's in the cluster that's going to do those things for me. Uh, the other thing that I happen to have here is Knative serving uh, with uh, a CNI, and that's because uh, it's, you know, it's always great to have Knative. It makes running applications easier. And uh, in the uh, profile configuration that Gabri prepared for me, uh, she the if I 
she assumed that a full cluster or a, uh, that a full cluster will have Knative installed, and so the configuration will produce YAML uh, for a Knative uh, service. Or if I have a small cluster and maybe I don't have Knative, then that tailored configuration will automatically produce YAML for a simple deployment and uh, service. But in the, in my case, my cluster has Knative. So those are the only two things I've prepped my cluster with. Other than that, it's a brand new cluster. So uh, I first of all, I want to uh, create a, a namespace so that I can do my, my work as an operator. So I'm going to add the repository that Gary created. So you can see package repo add is the first command that I run. Now <clears throat> I'm giving it the URL for uh, where Gabby published that OCI image that contains all of these installation files. So essentially I've installed, I have, I have all of the files that I need now in my cluster. Uh, nothing has been installed yet. No, the Hello app and the Giant app aren't running. But I've, I have a, I have a single uh, artifact that I can use to obtain all the software. So we can see already how Carvel facilitates software distribution. Um, and so then I can see, okay, well, what does this software that I, what does this installer essentially that I downloaded, what does it contain? And I can see that it contains uh, a meta package. And it contains three individual packages. And you know, because I uh, I know what I'm installing, I am interested in actually installing only the meta package. And the meta package should install the Redis Hello app and Giant app for me. So I want that now. I want that single click installation. So I'm going to create a namespace for the for the for these installation for these things to actually be installed. And now I can think about well, before I install meta package, what kind of what what is my target location and what kind of configuration values do I need to set? So here I can say, well, let's assume that this is a full profile. This is my largest cluster. This is maybe I'm doing it in the cloud. It's elastic. And so I've just created this namespace, right? Namespace apps. So I'm going to say that's where I want all these applications to be installed. And the hello app and the giant, giant app happen to have configuration values. Uh, during uh, Gabri's generation, you saw that uh, based on the schemas that each app had, an open API v3 schema uh, was automatically generated. So I can use that to see what, what are the values that I could possibly set. And so here I've decided that I want to, this is the way I want to name these apps in my cluster. Uh, I'm the deployment type. It's, it's the default anyway, but just to kind of highlight to you that uh, we're going to use Knative. It's the default for the pro full profile. So this isn't actually, it doesn't need to be set here in this case. And for hello app, I can set a, a message that the app will return. And so I'm going to say, full happy package. So I'm customizing it a little bit. So now I'm going to say install a package, but I'm choosing to install metapackagecorp.com version 100. So I'm choosing to install this one and not the other individual ones. So this is my, my installer experience with a single command. I'm going to actually install three applications, right? Meta, meta package is not really an application, right? It's just sort of a way to um, wrap the other three applications so that they are all installed as, as one thing. And now, um, and the other thing that's happening, of course, is that instead of kubectl, right, we're using this cap in the background. So if I make this a little smaller, you'll see kubectl wouldn't go through a bunch of YAML and give you this kind of summary. But, uh, but because we're using cap, I can see all of the different things that it's installing. And so it's going to uh, extract the package install and um, and then we can see that cap controller takes that package install file, it takes this package install uh, configuration and actually goes ahead and installs the packages. So now if I say, hey, which packages have been installed, I can see that uh, they've all been installed, right? The one that I manually installed and the other three. So what's the effect of installing these packages? Well, let me make this a tiny bit smaller. So I have two apps. Uh, these are the, the K service apps. Redis is is a is a different product. It doesn't have a Kubernetes uh, K native service associated with it, so of course it doesn't show up on the screen. Um, but I have Giant App, and it's Giant App is big, and so it's not that it's not working. It's just still starting up. But Hello App, which is light and and quick, has already started. So I can already test this application and. I know that I know that Redis is running well because that number that every time I refresh the page, it's storing the count in Redis, and so and you can see that we have happy, full happy package, which was the configuration value that I set in my file. So, um, so what we've seen here is that as a consumer, I have 
I can tailor my configuration and I can use, I can simply download one artifact, which is the repo, and then I can install one package, which is a meta package, and the result is a basically a single step, a two-step um, installation of an entire uh, multi-system, multi-component system. Now, uh, let's talk about time check. Okay, 152. Let's talk about what if I want to change something? What if I want to do any kind of update? In this case, the example I'm going to show you is a configuration values. So I let's say I want to change instead of a uh, full happy package, I want to change the value to medium happier package. And also, I've realized that uh, maybe my cluster is too small, I have to uninstall Knative maybe. And so I want the deployment not to use Knative, I just want it to use a deployment and a service, these core Kubernetes resources. So again, I've that's my new um, configuration values. So I simply reinstall the package. Again, I'm only working with meta package because this one will uh, transitively update the other three as necessary. And I'm providing my new values file here. So with a single command, I'm basically updating the software that's installed. So we'll give it a second. So it's reconciling. And again, kubectl would simply apply the YAML. It wouldn't tell you how things are going. But since this is using uh, CAP in the background and interacting with CAP controller, it continues to check on uh, if the reconciliation of the resources is done. And uh, it also tells me, well, you know, in this, we up, you updated two resources with this change uh, and you created two new resources. Um, so it's, it's very informative as to what's actually happening. And it, of course, it gives me the logs in the background um, as things are progressing. So just give it another few seconds to finish. I'll check. What is that? So in the chat, what is the advantage of using Carvel to deploy on Kubernetes when compared to other GitOps solutions like Argo CD or Flux? So Argo C so it can be in a workflow together with Argo CD or Flux. Again, this is sort of composable. You can pick and choose. But Carvel is serving a much broader uh, sequence of, of um, uh, use, uses, right, with this uh, uh, imperative packaging model plus the declarative. Um, and you can see that it has uh, different different pieces of functionality, but they can certainly work uh, in in concert with tools. If you are using, if you're already using Argo CD or Flux, um, you can you can use them together. Um, so this has finished reconciling. And let if me I know can, uh, yeah. if I can add to that. Uh, all of the package uh, creation, uh, Argo, it's only deploying, uh, so it's just the CD portion. Uh, it doesn't help you with building all of the structure for the package and the one install, uh, uh, one step install uh, type of experience. So we've updated our local package. So if we see what's now installed, we can see that again, everything is installed, everything is reconciled. And if I try to get the Kubernetes services, remember last time we got the K service, the K native service, sorry, for both applications, but now they're not there. And that's because in our new configuration, we chose not to use K native. We told it to use core app, core uh, resources. So if I just do a get all in that namespace, I can see that the giant and the hello app pods are there and the all my Redis pods are there as they were before with just the services and the basic uh, resources. So that um, that one also works. Let me do a time check to see. Okay, so I'm, it, it does work and it's a new message. I'm gonna skip proving that because I wanna show you some other stuff. So what if the target location is air gapped? This is also a, a very useful scenario. So um, that, if I can't access the image repository where all of these images are located, then how could I install? Because when I when I install the meta package, what actually happens is that it has to reach back out to the registry. In this case, that, that on this this uh, um, this registry is running outside uh, in the cloud. So I need that internet access to go and get all of the package images, and then I need to go back out to get the actual uh, OCI image for Hello App and for all the red the Redis follower, the Redis leader. So there's sort of this. Um, transitive relationship of, uh, of images and I keep having to go to the internet to get them. But if I'm working in an air gapped environment, I may not, I can't, I, I don't have access to all of those. So image package actually gives us a copy utility. And what it does is it looks uh, through that 
image uh, and all of the, the YAML configuration inside of it, it finds all of the images on the internet, it brings them down and, uh, and it copies them to a destination registry. So you would either do this, you could either use sort of a tarball in the middle to move it to an air-gapped environment, or if you have a jump box that has access to the internet and your air-gapped environment, you could do it in a single command like I'm showing here. So you're copying from the public access re uh, registry to your local air-gapped registry. And so you can see here, after it's done that copy, I can pull from my air gapped registry. This is just to show you what was pulled and I'm going to extract it into a temp directory on my local machine. And if I look inside of that temp directory, I can see that all of the files are there. And then if I explore what's inside of this images file, which is just a, a piece of metadata, right? These are the four packages that were actually in that, uh, um, uh, in that uh, re repository that I, uh, copied, but there's this extra piece of information that tells me about the images. And what that has is a reference to say the image that was here, for example, this giant app, app image that was in this network accessible registry, that is now in your air gapped registry. Uh, and so it's basically giving me the new image location. And so uh, with between the, the with the Carvel tools, and this will be automatically replaced. And so, when I want to do the local install, it's going to pull from the air gapped registry, and you can see that it's pulled all of the different images that it needs. Um, and then the last thing that we wanted to show you was that what if your if your target location is tiny? Let's say you your edge location is so small that you don't even want to do this air-gapped copy of all of these images. You really only want to be able to provide just the, the few images that the tiny uh, target will use. Well, then you can use vendor, for example, to pick and choose. And then I'll just show you the command here because I think we're going to, uh, you could basically generate a new, uh, a new repository and just tag it as a small one and not in, in this case we're not even including the giant app so that the giant app image itself is not copied to the air gapped edge location and so that way you can really tune uh, the size of the repository as well for your target so I think I think that's all we have time for uh, demo wise but that's really the that's the what we wanted to show you anything else would have just sort of added uh, a little color to that and so the other thing that we wanted to mention is that uh, as far as VMware uh, sort of dog fooding this technology because uh, VMware is uh, behind uh, Project Carvel, um, VMware's commercial software is VMware Tonsley Application Platform. And this is the strategy that we use in order to uh, package and distribute uh, our own application platform. So this is sort of under the covers of how VMware is approaching this problem for ourselves and how we try to make it really easy for consumers. Uh, this, is, this is a system that has 45 different components. And so this is how we've made it easy for ourselves to install and test, as Gabri was saying, solving the, the producer's challenges, and also make it easy for people who need to install this platform for themselves to have this one-click download, one-click installation, but also support different kinds of profiles. Um, so that's sort of an, an example, not, not the only one, but the one, of course, as VMware that we're most familiar with um, under the covers of how Carvel is used in the wild. And um, yeah, Gabri, any final words? Uh, I was just uh, answering to the question uh, in the chat, uh, asking uh, what are the options for deploying application in multi-cluster? Well, you, you need to build uh, uh, appropriate Repository package repositories so that each cluster will do the installation of these the components that are needed over there. Yeah, I think that I think the answer to that question also is uh, that that's uh, Carvel doesn't answer that question specifically, but there's other things. Uh, there's other solutions to the question of like how would you take any any piece of YAML and deploy it on multiple clusters. So that there's. Uh, yeah, I think there's different ways to solve that problem. Probably Argo CD, Cartographer, there's different there's different solutions for that, but that's not one of the problems that Carvel is focused on, the, the multi-cluster. But it does help you in um, uh, making it uniform that what needs to land at different targets can be managed in the same easy, low-touch central way uh, with custom configuration for every site. Does that, does that, know that, if that answer the question, I guess? 
And then, uh, yeah, Gabri, you want to wrap it up? Well, so I, uh, I don't know. It, it's uh, I, there is a, a screen. Can you close over there? We have. Uh, so I feel like uh, we were able to to show everything that we wanted. So that's great. Uh, and uh, as we were saying at the beginning, uh, the GitOps uh, approach was a big thing in our mind, as well as automation and easy way to consume, not only to build the packages, but also for the experience. So here is our work uh, that is available on that Git repository. And there is uh, the demo, the two demos that we were running are also available over there and uh, a few links in order to learn more about Carvel. So I, we hope you enjoyed this. Thank you very much. Thank you both so much. Thanks everyone for joining us. Uh, Cora and Gabri, thank you for your expertise. And everyone remember that we will have the uh, slides and presentation online later today. Um, join us again for another CNCF webinar and we'll see you soon. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.